Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Satham and today folks I'm going to be showing you how to get the artifact of the Skylord. Also as a part of this video I will be showing you how quickly you can do the cave using the tricks that I taught you before. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing both sides of the cave. There are two options of the cave and there are a total of four artifacts. First off I'm going to be doing the one that I showed you in my previous video, no god mode, no cheats, and I will show you how quickly it is possible to do this cave. Afterwards, I will be looking at the second option on the cave and how to get the artifact of the Skylord, as well as what you need to know and what you need to avoid. So if you find yourself enjoying this video or find the information in this video useful, please don't forget to support me by hitting that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and why not check out some of my other videos, who knows you might just enjoy them. So here we have to introduce a password by pressing the buttons, the password is Grata, the first A has a little uh, funky thing on top of it, and I'm going to show you how to get to all of the letters, and as it currently stands, there is only this method with the climbing picks to do it because that corner is still glitched and I'll show you exactly what I mean um, so we want this letter right here the A with the thing at top of it be careful around that corner that is the corner that is glitched if you touch that corner you will get stuck in it and unless you have access to admin commands you won't be able to get out so very very careful there Let's press the final letter, then we're going to go down into the uh, fire portion of the cave. Here I'm going to use the exact trick that I did before. We're going to be using the climbing picks to get around the room without activating the fire trap. So you want to go around the left, stick to the wall as much as you can, touch it if you can. There's my body from last time. Press the button and then up the wall and all the way around it. So I'm gonna use the climbing picks to get around this room without actually touching any of the items in the room that may trigger the fire. As you can see the gate is open and there we go I am in. From this point on you don't have to do that if you have the aberration stuff. As you can see I'm making my way as quick as I can through this cave so I'm gonna try and speed run it. Now, just around this corner, there is an artifact, or sorry, I meant a loot crate that does drop some stuff. Normally, it's not anything good, but you can't pick it up safely because it is not booby trapped. So, I'm going to make my way up the wall using the climbing picks. And we're off to the next portion. There we go, that's where the button is. I couldn't remember where the button was on this door. Now here you will want to attach some zip lines from this end to the next end. That way you will not activate the booby traps. In my previous video I did show you where the booby traps are located and what each one of them does. I think it was this button. Maybe not. Hold on a bit. I can't remember which button it was. I don't think it's this one. Alright, there we go. There's a third booby trap right there. <laughs> Alright, so it must be... It's not that one. I'll press it again just to be sure. Ah, okay. It was this button. I did forget which button it was. Now, the drop in front of you is booby trapped, so you will want to make your way towards it very carefully and cautiously. Don't just go in there. Just do what I do. Just kind of creep in slowly. There we go. And now it is safe. Around this side, second button opens the door. First one drops grenades, if you remember from my previous video. And we are now at the maze. If you haven't seen my previous video, just follow what I do. Otherwise, you will get lost in this maze. So we want... Okay, that's the door that we want to open. So remember, it's the first button on that one. We're going to make our way deeper in. Be careful, there might be some bad stuff. I'm going to press 
the button to my right, that one. I'm just going to get my stuff ready. Okay, that doesn't do anything, so it's this one. We're going to go this way. And I think, if I remember correctly, it's the button on the right here. And here it is the middle button out of the three switches. So we're going to go this way. Over here you will have some nasties greeting you. So do be prepared. There we go. There's the bat. Okay, cool. So the bat is in the wall. just wanted to make sure that it's not out here. So we're going to want to activate that door, but the switch is somewhere down here. And as you can see, there is a bat, and it's probably not by itself. Here's a button for that door. All right. There we go. Bat down. And that's it. From here on, you should see a hole in the floor. And we're going to go down that hole, that drop. This is the one. And over here, it is fairly safe. You don't need a zipline. You can just jump across. Be careful not to jump down there because it's going to be a pain getting out if you don't have climbing picks. Here is the first artifact of the video. As you can see. So this is the artifact of the clever. Now, in this room, there are two options and two doors. One requires a human sacrifice. The other one requires a creature. So, for this, I am going to spawn in a dodo force tame it and then throw it into the pit. That will open the door on the left. And the human sacrifice will open the door on the right. Okay, it doesn't want to spawn another one in. Okay, I guess I'll just have to force tame this one. Okay, he's just walked away, so I'm just going to creep up behind him, and like so. I'm going to put my shoulder pet down and throw the dodo in here. Oh, I want to pick up my bulb dog, as he's my source of light. Alright, now, if you run across the ground here, you will activate a lot of triggers, which will in turn drop a lot of bad creatures on your head so the best way around it if you have the option is use the climbing picks as you can see i have not yet activated any trap and you won't activate any traps until you get out as you will see as i make my way towards the chamber where you will have the boss fight so i'm just gonna regain my stamina here and then continue making my way around Now, for those that have watched my previous video, you did see me use the zipline, which did activate some of the some of the traps, and we did have two on it. As you've seen on that first section, there was nothing to worry about. So it does seem like using the climbing picks is the best method of getting around this corridor. We should be coming up on the exit in just a little bit. Alright, I think we are fairly close now, but I just need to regain some stamina. There we go, there's a gate, so it is safe. Switch is underneath us. There it is. And that opens the door. From this point on, you will have to fight some ghost-like wolves and dire bears or bears. So I've attached a zipline to the door frame 
of that exit and to the ceiling. And the way to activate this boss battle is by hitting one of those creatures on the ground. Alright, where are they? There we go, we have one dire bear. And as you kill the dire bears and wolves, their levels will increase. And on normal servers, I think they go up or should go up to 250. Now, there might be other ways of doing this. However, I find that being attached to a zipline is the easiest way. I can also move from one point to the other to readjust my sight or get the creatures to move into my crosshairs. There we go, that's level 100. So we've got another dire bear coming in. That's 150. We've got another wolf. So as you can see, sometimes you may need to readjust your position. However, and to me, the zipline is simply the most convenient way of doing this. Okay, so we are still currently on 150. Now I do have three times the difficulty. So the maximum level these creatures will reach would be 250. And I think and believe that it probably or most likely reflects what you will be facing on the official servers. Uh, there's another one. Okay, he's hidden behind the tree. Ah, oh, there he is. Okay, huh. That's dead. I didn't realize that was dead, but... At least I know. So... Let's see, what level are you? Two fifty, so we are nearly finished with this boss battle, if you can call it that. After you defeat the wolves and bears, you will then be able to access the last two artifacts of this cave, which should be somewhere on my right. There we go. There we go, that's where the artifacts are. Okay, with that being said and done, I am going to show you how to get out of the cave. So somewhere around this side, there is like, I'm just going to get some water. There is a hole in the ground, like a grill. There we go, this is it. Just jump down there. There's nothing to hurt you, it's just water. And then make your way to the end. So I'm just quickly going to show you how to get to the door that lets you out. And that is one of those doors that you saw. Or a door similar to the one you've seen inside the cave. It is also on a timer, so be careful. Because once you're out, you can't get back in unless you go back to the exit. As you can see, the exit does get lower and lower and narrower and narrower, and there is the exit. As you can see, it's quite a tight squeeze. And there we go. We are out. Well, almost as you can see, there still is a bit more to go. However, I guess the game calculates this as being out of the cave. As you can see, this one gets quite narrow, quite tight. And you can get stuck in it. So the way you want to go is towards the left. 
You can also do this crouching. I do find it a lot easier if you are crawling for some reason. You tend not to snag onto the ceilings. Okay, back at the fire chamber. This time we are going to take the second route. I'm going to show you how to navigate around the room without activating the traps. The fire. And I'm going to show you where the button for whoops for the second door is i'm just going to wait to regain some stamina be careful around here not to touch the statue because you might catch fire at this point you will need some scuba gear so you'll need a scuba tank and some flippers or a lot of oxygen but i wouldn't invest my point in oxygen so therefore i recommend some flippers and a scuba tank it is a bit of a long swim but it's not that complicated as you can see there's nothing bad here however we will have a nice welcoming party on the other end. Also, from this point on, the video might be a little bit choppy, so I do apologize for that. And that is because I am going to be running some tests, and I will cut in when I've got information that is worth sharing. As I'm going to attempt to find some solutions for the traps in this portion of the cave. Alright, so I am back. Um, I have tried to see if there is a way of avoiding these snakes and nasty creatures falling on your head. There isn't. I've tried using picks and going around it, but there is a button down there that you will need to access. And as you can see in a bit, the moment I get close to it, it activates a trap. So there's really no way around this, but just going for it and then killing off all the nasties. Okay, a bit of lag. I'll sort out the spider. And afterwards, it's generally safe. However, I would proceed with caution. It really does depend how long you've been fighting those creatures for. If you do take a while to kill those creatures off, you might end up with them spawning in again. Also, when you do approach this button, don't come down the middle of the corridor because you will have a bowler flung at you and you will be immobilized. And the last thing you want to do is be immobilized while fighting those creatures. So we're not taking down that first path. We're going down this one. When you start hearing the clicks, just run. Do not stop for anything. Just keep going. You will have stuff dropped on your head. You will have bats. You will have snakes. You will have all sorts. Just do not stop. Keep going. Once we get to this point, it is best to deal with whatever is still following you. So I'm going to swap over to my fabricated sniper rifle. Here comes a bat. That one's down. What else? We have a titan bow. That's down. Okay, this time around, I'm a bit lucky. I only got two creatures that managed to follow me. Most of the creatures got stuck or got left behind, so... That is good for us. So we want to go into that room that I just showed you before, right here. So this is the room that we want to enter. And as you can hear, there are spikes going on and off. So the entirety of the floor is pretty much covered in spikes. The button for that door is here. And I'm just going to run in there. Try and get to the button. Press this button over here. I am probably going to get stung a couple of times. But I do have medical bruise with me. And decent quality armor. I'm going to spend some time healing here, and once I am healed, I'm going to show you guys how to do the next portion. And this, my friends, is the trickiest part of the entire cave. There are a series of switches or buttons that we need to press in a specific sequence, and I am going to talk you through it. So I'm just going to wait for my health to regen. And afterwards, I'm going to show you and talk you through what we need to do in this specific portion of the cave. So we're going to press this button first. From the moment you press this button, you are on a timer, so you need to run. 
Second button is over here. Press that do not stop. We're not going to pick up that drop. Third button, second button here, first button. Then we run all the way back to where we entered this room. And the doors that were here are now up. So I'll press this button, this button, and this button. Wait for this door to go, or sorry, go up. And then just make a complete run for it. At this point, around here, there is a trigger for some bats. As you can see, you get stuff flung towards you. And I kind of got stuck in web thanks to the spiders. Whatever you do, do not stop to fight the creatures until you have entered the room that you've seen me enter in this video. Okay, in this segment, I'm going to show you two things. So yes, I am doing that run again. I have gone back to start it all over again and show you what happens if you do miss that gate the first time around. Also, I am going to show you in this segment of the video how to work around that section that drops the creatures in front of you with the intention of stopping you from getting to the gate. So I am going to make my way to the last three switches. I'm going to press this one, this one, and the final switch. Once the gate is up, I suggest sticking to the right side of the wall. Try and hug the right side of the wall, especially before that jump. So around here, you want to be on the right side. And as you can see, it has not triggered the trap. But if you do miss the gate the first time, this is what happens. It will not open. So I think this only opens once a day. Okay, we've got a Titan Ball coming this way. I'm going to clear out the Titan Ball, and I think I've activated some booby traps. It's all right. We'll deal with that. Oh, okay, now I activated him. Never mind. Right, I'm going to wait for this to clear out. I'm going to clear out the Titan Boa. Then I'm going to ghost my way through that door and show you how to proceed afterwards. Okay, that has now cleared. So I am going to quickly hit fly and then ghost so I can get through the door. There is the bat that followed me the first time around. So there we go. I think I should be all right from this point on. So this is what you'll end up seeing. Be careful for those things on the ceiling. They shoot out trank dart as well as grenades. Okay, so here is the button for the door at the end of this corridor. However, I'm not going to press it just yet because I want to show you something. Do be careful with those things because, like I said before, they do drop or they do shoot trank arrows at you. And some of them will drop grenades, as you can see or as you can hear. Try and avoid them if you can. Do bring with you some medical brews and some stimulants and even some water as if you do use the stims you will certainly run out of water quite quickly so if you press this button over here it'll open up this door and you can loot this drop i don't want anything out of it as this is on a local gameplay i'm gonna make my way back to that switch i'm gonna press the button and just like with all the other doors up until now, it is on a timer, so you will have to be mighty, mighty quick. So as you can see, I am looking at the ceiling to see where all the pipes are. Once you press the button, make a run for it and try and avoid the stuff on the ceiling. Okay, there we go. Once you are through, if you've been hit by trank darts, use some stims, get some water, regen yourself if you need to. Make sure you are fully loaded because around the corner we have guests. So I'm going to try and pull them in one at a time as I don't want to fight them all at the same time. So one scorpion down. We've got a spider coming. You can also use that corner just like I did to prevent yourself from being webbed as that's a thing you don't want to 
find yourself in, especially if you do manage to aggro all the stuff you want to be mobile. So we've got a bat and a arthroplora. Chances are there is a second arthroplora there. So I'm going to try and get these guys uh, a distance. I'm so glad that second bullet didn't hit the arthroplora. Right, bat down. I'm going to reload just to make sure I've got enough bullets. Let's see. Alright, so that one landed. Arthroplora down. Is there anything else coming? I can see something moving. There we go. Okay. That wasn't all that hard. It does take some patience around here. You don't want to rush in. Or you can rush in. It's up to you. Obviously, I want to take it safe. Because if you die here, you ain't coming back to get your stuff. So, from this point on, I think the devs wanted us to jump on all those little... Uh, I don't even know platforms that do shoot out the spikes. However, I'm going to be going to my climbing picks and that is going to be my method of doing this portion of the cave. So I'm just going to run across. No point in trying to, to do the jump maze that the devs wanted us to do. As there is an easier way, I'm going to pick up this drop. Not that I need it, but just to show you guys what you can get. Okay, so the artifact of the Sky Lord is quite close to us. It is just around here. And there we have it. One artifact of the Sky Lord. From this point on, the rest of the maze is quite easy. However, for those that want to see the other side of the maze with the human sacrifice, I am going to put myself in God mode and put myself as a sacrifice to show you guys what it looks like and what you can find. And there we go. I have now sacrificed myself. So we are now going down the right side. All right, so I'm going to neighbor walking just so I can do this portion as normal. Here, once you go in, you need to sprint for it and do not stop until you reach this point. Because if you do, you will become a human pancake. Now, I know it looks like it hasn't shut fully, but if I try and go through it, it will not allow me. So, it will crush you and... As I said before, if you die at this point, you won't be able to get back in to get your stuff. And there is a second portion just like the one before. With the walls that close in. We'll press the button. And this will lead us into the main chamber where we fought the wolves. As before, I have attached a zip line to the pillar of the door frame that leads into this room. And... Unlike last time, instead of going for the ceiling, I went for the furthest wall so that I am slightly lower and therefore have a better aim on the creatures. And if this is the first run of the day that you're doing in this cave and you take this option, you will have to fight the dire wolves and bears. However, if this is the second consecutive run, chances are you won't have to fight them i do not know what the respawn timers for the boss is in this particular instance however i am assuming that it might possibly be somewhere once a day well that is it for this video folks that is how you get these artifacts the first time you do it it might be a bit tricky however the more you practice the better you get at it and as you've seen it can be done fairly easily I do hope that you have enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please don't forget to support me by hitting that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And why not check out some of my other videos? Who knows, you might just enjoy them. Until next time, stay safe, folks.